Welcome everybody to Tales from the Tackle Shop. It is episode 16, I believe. I've kind of lost track because uh, we missed a week out. But uh, I'll explain what happened there in a mo. Nice to see you. And you, mate. And you. Have you been out much? Um, no. Just doom and gloom like everyone else at the minute. It's a bit of a crappy time of year, isn't it? Oh, weather's horrendous. Although the sun's out and it's nice and it's nice to go for a walk and do all that. But it's no good for actual fishing, is it? It's no. sort of proper bottom end of the winter and the only way is up really now it's you know weather wise and fishing wise and yeah just a bit doom and gloom but yeah. i like the fact that we had some cold weather because um it, it's it's nice it is nice but after sort of we had the cold snap before christmas it's oh that's yeah cold and now it's sort of kind of want to get get going here i want to get moving on here but yeah yeah <clears throat> so you haven't been out with your icebreaker uh, I've been out in the boat a few times trying to break the ice. At, um, at um, Rookery? Yeah, we tried to... Well, on the Saturday, it was meant to be on Magpie, and I got the boat in, and I've got the boat on full bore, and I'm in it, rocking it, and it, it's just breaking, and I thought, what am I wasting my time out here? So went on Jay, managed to get around on Jay, but it was sort of what, two inches thick, I suppose, and I thought... I don't know. Anyway, that night was the coldest night we had in this little second cold snap, minus six. I'm thinking, oh god, got the boat in again to break it, and the boat wouldn't do anything. So we sort of said, look, lads, the only way you can break it is to break it yourself. Uh, give them an extra half hour to sort of break the ice and do whatever they got to do. Said it is what it is, and still 21 of them fished. Um, <laughs> and uh, as you could probably tell, it fished very hard. Um, but they all sat there in the sun. It was actually a pleasant day. It's just the fishing was terrible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've been catching some Xander. Have you? Yeah. Um, since beginning of Jan, I haven't done very well with Xander this year, so I've just been trying different places. On lures. I've had a few, but it's just coincided with this really mm. cold weather. So it's been yeah. like, I've actually done half days. I've got that bloody cold. Mm. I did two days on the bounce last week, and I thought, what am I doing? Mm. I got really, really cold the second day. But um, yeah, I'm not. I've not even used baits yet this season. I might do a bit of um, bait fishing the last couple of months. But um, I'm trying to go in my head. I want to catch a massive zander on a lure, and I can't do it. Mm. So it's it's frustrated me. But uh, got to try different things. But I, I have questioned my sanity mm. out of the cold weather. Where's your brew dog? Yeah, we're on water now. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, you see. It's this always co this also coincides with let me go let me backtrack a little bit. So we didn't have a podcast last week. Reason being, Andy hit a, I just hit a brick wall of doing all this editing for all the videos that we took out. I thought and it coincided with the two days fishing I was when I got really cold. I thought, Do you know what? I can't be bothered. Mm. And I think that probably coincides with the weather we're having. Yeah. And I thought for a week no one's gonna miss it. Um we won't have any match results to to talk about. And also just basically needs to recharge the batteries. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. But it also coincides with Jeff Tottleby, who we had on a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. who was excellent about talking about the prostate cancer. Yeah. And I hope you guys have get, got yourselves checked in. I've got a, an appointment on the 1st of Feb. So that's really important. And this links into what I'm about to mention is I... I don't know if you'd have watched this, Alex. I did a video last summer on losing weight whilst fishing. Right. Because... I noticed I was getting really porky and I weighed myself and I was 14 and a half stone. And it's the heaviest I've ever been. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I used to go to the gym a lot. Also, I played a lot of sport back in the day. So I've always been, all, everything was always looking after itself weight wise. And last summer I got to 14 and a half stone and I was panting walking along riverbanks and I was panting just doing basic movements mm -hmm. with just things that I would never have thought about normally. And I thought I've got to lose some weight. So I lost actually half a stone in the first month of doing this mm -hmm. video because I did it over a month and then I set myself so I went down to 14 stone and I set myself a target of being 13 stone by Christmas <clears throat> and as you can hear me wheezing I'm an asthmatic as well so it helps if I'm, if I'm not mm -hmm. a bit lighter and that was about September time and I thought I got October I thought I got three months to lose a stone I'll do it easily didn't lose a pound I was I think this is weird normally I can do it by cutting out 
carbohydrates and things and just mm-hmm. being a bit more sensible. First week you lose a load of weight and then... It's been over 50, mate. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Your metabolic rate drops through the floorboards. I've been very sedentary from before. COVID was the killer for me. Mm. Don't want to go anywhere near a gym because I don't want to be touching the equipment mm-hmm. people have touched. And I couldn't shift it. And then a bizarre conversation. Somebody just said, why don't you try mm-hmm. doing this? And basically, it's one it's some your ex next door neighbours. I mentioned this to you before. Stacey Newman. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to something called, it was, it's called B, I get this right, Be Smart Nutrition Club. Now, I started this on November the 29th and I've lost a stone in less than two months mm-hmm. just by eating properly. And the reason I put these here is the one, one of the measurements I had taken which really worried me was something called visceral fat, which is the fat around mm-hmm. your organs. Mine's dangerously high. It's mm-hmm. still too high. Mm-hmm. I have lost that amount of visceral fat in a month, in two months rather, right. which is two and a half litres. So I was going to fill mm-hmm. these up with water and pour them into something, but I thought with all the mics over it's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. So that's about 750 mil. That's about 750 mil, which that's the litre and a half. That one's a litre. So if you imagine all that, I have lost that amount of visceral fat in two months already. Right. And I'm thinking, wow, it's... It got to dangerous levels without me realising mm-hmm. of where I was with my own body shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't, I kind of shape, you puff my belly, I hide it quite well because of my shoulders and things. And now it's dropped off. I'm thinking, bloody hell, that's a good job I noticed. And I've still got a long way to go, but it's, it's amazing what's happening. And um, I just wanted to share it really because obviously with Jeff, with his prostate cancer, and uh, as you get older, as a man in particular, and a lot of the guys who watch this will be at the same sort of stage as me, it's really important that they mm. kind of identify things and rather than leaving it and just going, oh, I'll be all right, I've always been all right, because that was my mentality, mm-hmm. is actually do something about it. So this breakfast club, I go there, I'll be going three, two to three times a week, and I sit there, and it's mainly all ladies come in, and they have lost four stone, five stone, six stone, mm-hmm. in about a year, and you kind of go, bloody hell, and felt a bit rude but I said to one or two of them can I see a before picture and they, yeah and, and you kind of think they have lost this mm. weight it's been incredible and it's transformed their body shape and you, you, you sit there and go wow this is not just me there's a lot of people who are of my age a bit younger a bit older who are really badly out of shape mm. and didn't realise it it's not until you do something like this that you kind of go that's good so if anybody wants details I'll put a link in the description but you can contact me and I'll just pass Pass the information that you need, but if you're local to March, it's been amazing, and um, yeah, I'm motivated now to get back into some kind of sensible shape for the summer just so I can be more active mm-hmm. because it, it hit me. And like I said, getting to that 50 54, well, I'll be 54 in March, you kind of like it hits you, and you kind of go, Wow, yeah. So I think Jeff hit a, a point when he was talking about. That side of things. I think as men, we're crap at talking about things and we let things build up. Mm-hmm. And I think we can use um, media like this to get the message across. And there's many things that we can do, but we just got to talk about it. So, yeah, no brew dog at the minute. It's not saying that I have banned it. I don't it. think his cake would have done you any good. Yeah, but you can do it. it you don't have to cut everything out. You just, most things that you eat now just got to be the right choices. And if you have a bit of carrot cake every now and again, or the odd pint, or the curry, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, because you've got to continue living. You don't mm-hmm. cut them out. No. You just um, had most of your food at the right time of the day and the right type of thing. And then when you do overindulge, so what? You use it as a reward, mm-hmm. don't you? So um, it's all about getting the balance right. But also, going back, I've been far more effective fishing. Right. When I was fishing these comps last year, my ankles were, were aching. So I was doing the WPC perch main and all these things. And the second day, I wasn't, I wasn't on my game because I was physically knackered. When there's two of you in a boat, the boat's rocking, it's windy as hell. Maybe the boats have been allowed out where they wouldn't normally be. It's, it's physically knackering. because you, you, you're, yeah. And also, you're, always, you're never staying still. You're moving, you're finding fish, you're, you're always on the lookout. And you, you've got to be alert and on, the, on, your, on your game. Second days, I was really struggling. Halfway through the second day, I was knackered. Mm. And I'm thinking, what's going on? You want to try Ireland for a week then, mate? Same thing though, isn't it? 
to be a better angler, don't matter what, you've got to be fitter. And it's like your you dad. You need a week to get over it. Your dad always says, "Well, these commercial fishermen, well, you can't can't keep up the young lads now." No. And what he's saying is, is because they're they're just of that age, they're stronger. But you get someone my age who's kept in great shape, they'd be able to keep up with them. But it's unless you have done it, mm. yeah. So anglers might think, well, I don't need to do that. But we all have to think about it, don't we? Anyway, rambled on, but that was a... You can see how it all links in. I think it's quite important to get it across. Right, um, let's get back to the fishing then. So you didn't even fish on Sunday, did you? No, I I was a snowflake. No, I weren't a snowflake. I was intelligent enough to realise that I didn't need to be sat there fishing. Um after watching them weigh in and stuff like that, I felt like, mm, uh, you know, when you sort of, mm, uh, uh, and then I thought, no, so best decision just, just I made. Just down at Benick, you went down. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, I went down for the weigh in and I thought, Ugh. it looked cold and there's a few fish being caught. Uh, you always think, oh, I wish I had a fish now. And then I watched everyone pack away and I thought, nah, I made the right decision. Do you know what? When I, so when I was a kid, and you'd arrange to go fishing, you'd mm. go whatever the weather. Yeah, yeah. So I, when I was in my teens, whatever, even if it was frozen solid, we'd go and smash the ice. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't catch anything. No, but you just, that's you what went. you needed to but do. But when it was really horrendous weather, you go, you wouldn't catch anything, but yeah. you went. Until very recently, it's only this year really, I've learned. And I'm thinking, how has it taken that long? Mm. And I'm thinking, now, yeah. I won't go if, if I just think, this is going to be horrendous. Yeah, maybe that's the defeatist attitude, but yeah, I know. I, I'm, you know, if it's a team match or anything like that, the weather doesn't bother me whatsoever. And sort of looking back in at it now, you think all these people organising these leagues and events and stuff like that. If they weren't organised, people don't go. Yeah, like people like me anyway. If you know, I won't go pleasure fishing because I just don't get the buzz from pleasure fishing. Yeah, so if yeah. there's no like Sunday, it was an open match, which, okay, so you're practising for the Wintley final. But, but are you in those conditions? Not in those conditions, <laughs> no. no. Because if it's that cold, it'll be called off because yeah. decal will be frozen and, yeah. you know, whatever. So it was sort of, I didn't need to be there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But so, I still got my fix by just watching them. I remember playing rugby, and I never, never understood why rugby was a winter sport, being a back. Because mm-hmm. on days or weeks over the winter when the pitches are full of water, sodden, mm. and the ball stays in the forwards, the backs don't get it. Mm-hmm. You kind of think, well, what is the point of this game? Yeah. And uh, the only reason you turned up is because you're part of a team. Yeah. So you are. Yeah. You're right. Team team yeah. sports. You do turn up. Yeah. Well, most people do. Some yeah. people are too selfish and they bail out, bail on the team. But most people turn yeah. up, don't they? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. And what do you actually get out of it? I, I feel <laughs> lost when I don't go fishing on a Sunday. If I'm at work, I'm at work and whatever. But Sunday, I was driving around, lost. I was. I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't. I was like, oh, what am I going to do now? So when I got my hair cut on a Sunday, I thought, oh, it's only nine o'clock. You know, what do I do? And it, I just, I don't know, I had to drive around and looked at a few different venues and looked at a few anglers fishing and still got went back to the went and watched Benick weigh in last sort of hour or walked along there and I just think if I didn't go fishing what would I do it was like it was just weird mm. like what else happens on a Sunday when you're not fishing because you're so sort of zoned in every Sunday that's what I do I get up and I do this and I do that and that's your routine it just felt weird not fishing yeah yeah feel weird but like I said it's this is good this we need uh, Everyone's, we've always had very mild winters for the last eight, ten years. It's nice to have a bit of cold weather for a change. I think it helps everything. I think some of the weak fish die off. Yeah. Because it's, it stops the spread of disease, doesn't it? Yeah. It kind of cleanses yeah. the, the venues. Um, it's, not, it's not the end of the world to have a break for a week or two. No. And it also gets you back refreshed. I think it, I think it does something to the water. It certainly makes it a bit fresher, doesn't it? It seems to yeah, yeah. lose that stagnant... Kills all the algae. Yeah, kills the algae yeah, off. Yeah. And I think it has then the benefit. It must have the benefit for, like, the summer. That it's got less... It, I don't know. It just feels like it's more balanced. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I've got no scientific proof, and I'm probably talking about no, nonsense. It just feels... I know exactly what you mean. It just feels like, like yeah. Like what I was saying before, with, we're sort of the lowest of the low at the minute, January, it's like... And then all of a sudden, it's like everything's uphill from now yeah. on, isn't it? yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The weather starts to improve and this starts to improve and yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we ain't all died and you know we've all got houses and stuff like that. They forecast before Christmas saying how doom and gloom and no one's got any money and stuff like that. It's. Uh, and Arsenal are top of the league. Uh, and... <laughs> when you said about refreshing, I was going to mention uh, about Arsenal, but sorry, Jeff, we're going to have to talk about football for a little bit. Well, they are top of the league. I'll tell you what, mate, they've got to play City twice. If we can get a draw out of one of those two yeah. games, we're still going to be ahead of yeah. them. Yeah. And I reckon we can beat them at one of those games. Possibly. No, no. The Premier League is, is it's full of shocks, isn't it? I mean, there's no shocks, mate. We've just developed. No, I'm not talking about Arsenal. I'm talking about the fact that Liverpool and Chelsea are that far down. Do you know what I mean? And Newcastle, where they are, that is a shock, you know. Well, no, you've got a good manager, haven't you? Yeah, but... Eddie Howe's always been a good manager. If someone has said to... Nine out of ten people, if you'd have said to them, ah, oh, Newcastle could have been in the top three halfway through the season, they'd say no. He's coached them really well. Yeah. And these, this is... So what, what, this is what I'm going to say. The last thing I'm going to say about Arsenal. I, I, I'm not even too bothered about this season. Mm. the next three or four seasons they're going to be the top team in the league yeah, because yeah. they've got look at the age of them they, they're only going to get better I know and Arteta coached in such a way that he's not happy all these games because there's still things that they can improve upon mm-hmm. so I just think it's, it's it, to be an Arsenal fan it's exciting times because it's like what when Wenger came no one knew anything about him but it's like watching a new Wenger coming but you know already what he's doing yeah do you know what yeah, I mean yeah and Arsenal have always had a bit of class as a club, haven't they? They've always do it the right way. They don't panic. Yeah. Which I think I think the biggest thing, like in football now, with Newcastle being bought out by new owners and the buzz around the club and the city, and all of a sudden, fans are getting taken into consideration now. But Newcastle have done it the right way. Yeah, but what I mean they're is... Not, they're not going... Whole, they're not like doing what Chelsea, what Chelsea are doing. It's no, a disgrace, isn't no, it? No, but other clubs are looking at that and go... And go like all of a sudden there's a little bit of jealousy do you know yeah, what I mean not a template not, and same with Arsenal people are jealous of Arsenal they've got that buzz again and uh, they're doing it the right you know what way. I mean yeah. it's, it's different whereas it's a life lesson isn't it yeah you you you, str- you plan so it goes back to this mm-hmm. what Jeff you plan if you don't plan you won't get the results you need mm-hmm. so it's about anything you do in life whether it be tackling that baits match fishing team you've yeah. got a plan haven't you yeah. and I just think it's very obvious that we, we have a society now where everybody wants instant results that's, that's the problem which it? is the problem yeah. whereas the Arsenal's and the Newcastle's are actually going and Man United you can Five see they're starting to plan it as well to a degree yeah. Gone yeah. back to what it used to be. Tr- they are starting to, yeah, yeah. and it's, it, it's good. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all I'm going to say is Arsenal haven't won anything yet. All right, I keep having this with all my other Arsenal friends, and they're like, Ooh. I said, but you haven't won anything yet. Don't get carried Mate, away. I don't, honestly, I don't, if we come second in the league this season or third, I'm still going to be mega excited for next year because that's. Would you me... suck a tramp off, though? No. No. And no. I do feel sorry for Matt Page. Being a Spurs fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem living around here they're either Spurs the Gooner or West Ham fan aren't they but this is what I'm saying can you imagine being Matt Page he'd go oh, no it's like all the United fans isn't it two weeks ago they beat City and all of a sudden all these United fans just appeared out yeah, and they're, they're going to win the league yeah, yeah. Well, did you see that weren't off so that, that was definitely not did you see that Crystal play? Palace free kick oh yeah one the... goal yeah what? and now it's like oh they're they lose two games, they'll draw and lose, oh, they're out of it. What a strike. Yeah, but that's football that was summed what, up, But what it? a free kick. Yeah. That was like, you, you couldn't, that was just... Mm. You didn't do it against Newcastle on Saturday, but they are. No, because you kicked them to death, that's why. Oh, there we go. Um, right, I'm going to mention one th- another thing to you guys. This, this is a kind of like, I wasn't doing this on purpose, but it lends its way. Talking about structuring something, myself and Alex have been talking about the podcast, and... I can't believe there's so many of you out there watch us ramble on. Mm. We appreciate you watching us and we appreciate all the positive feedback. But I personally feel as we've got to a point we need to freshen it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what you think, Alex, but I'm, we need comments from the viewers because obviously this is the reason we do it. We don't do it. Mm. We, we do it because we enjoy each other's company. We like talking about fishing, but we do it for this. And obviously this is our fourth year of doing it. And I just feel we need to change it. Not drastically but I feel we need to make it I feel we need to make it a bit shorter a bit punchier and we need to allow 
it to branch out to other regions mm-hmm. of the country without losing its central yeah. Fenland feel. I have no answers. I don't know how to do this, but that's mm. not a problem. We'll yeah. work it out. Um, I don't like keep doing it in my kitchen upstairs or at, at the at rookery because it just feels like we haven't got a home. But again, that might be the nature of it. I don't know. So throwing it open to you guys, particularly looking forward to season five, really want to make it a bit more, I don't know, pacier. Mm-hmm. A bit more pizzazz. Yeah. Um, we, I think we need to get back to talking about mainstream angling politics a little bit and getting both sides of the discussion going. Not have the whole podcast on it because it'd be bloody boring, but we, we, but we can do things like that. But really want ideas from you guys. One idea a friend of mine did have was people from hotbeds of match angling regions just giving us a five-minute, four-minute, three-minute snapshot of what's happened there in their region mm-hmm. for that week with some match results. That could work if we're two or three other regions. Yeah, yeah. But it's got to be real short and quick, hasn't it? Otherwise, yeah. it'll be like, oh. So, I don't know. Have you got any ideas at the top of your head? Um, or do you not, disagree? Or? Not automatically. Obviously, we want to keep the local Fenland fishing TV yeah. theme, don't we? Um, but, yeah, just maybe if the viewers come up with a topic they want us to, to talk about each week or yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean like yeah. messaging and say oh I want to get get you to talk about I don't know people like Paul Barnes are really good he always sends in messages but the, yeah. it's the same one or two people yeah. and it feels as though whatever we do everyone will just go oh, it's just, it needs to be a bit more I don't know a little bit more pace with it a bit yeah. more presence um, we don't want to lose also the fact that we're kind of like the local angling newspaper. That's yeah. important for us, yeah. isn't it? That we keep the local uh, presence going with all the match results because that's that's part of the community-based mm-hmm. idea behind it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you've got some ideas, guys, just let us know. What we'll do, we'll try different things. And I'm thinking if we try one or two ideas the back end of this season for this podcast and then we'll know what we want to do mm-hmm. next time round. But uh, the chip shop T-shirts, I thought were a brilliant idea. Mm. That. Yeah, it creates a bit of a buzz, doesn't it? People avoid them. Well, you're in that circle. I'm not, mm. and so I don't know. But yeah, you, you the look but on I your think, face. Uh, yeah, up and down the country, people are saying, "Oh, he's been chip shop." Do you know what I mean? People are looking out for it, and I don't know. It just it has created a bit of a banter between all sorts of clubs. You know, every club in the area is sort of. I don't know, it just adds to the atmosphere, doesn't it? So I think we should keep that going for next year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think, yeah. a lot of these hoodies, I think this was a really good idea as well. A bit of merch that we've got going on. But it, I don't know. There must be millions of ideas on things mm. that we could do. I'm sure someone will come up with some good yeah. ideas. I know people are going to say more guests. The guests, yes, but it has to be the, the right guests and it's time constraints. Because mm-hmm. it's trying to get everybody in the same place at yeah. the same time which is the biggest problem. If we don't know people, it becomes even more awkward. I think during one of the seasons, it co- it coincided with COVID, which actually made Zoom calls very easy to do. Yeah. So that helped, but also didn't help. Um, and if people don't know, sometimes getting the audio of the Zoom calls is a nightmare. And you have to... You end, oh, yeah, so I won't go into detail, but we can work around things and see what works. Before we go on to the match results, also today, no, because... This will come out tomorrow. This is mm-hmm. Tuesday. So yesterday, uh, new Willsmore video. Right, on, yeah. yeah. On I started l- watching that, actually. On Lake John Fishery. Yeah. Is that the correct name? Of yeah, the place? Lake John, yeah. And yeah. your dad was telling me that's quite a famous place in match fishing. Yeah, for skimmer fishing, yeah. it's um, That area is quite a hotbed of that silverfish fishing. You know, you've got South End Farm. There's loads, especially this time of year. It's comfortable. Um, and yeah I have started to watch it I haven't finished it all but Simon's explaining what he feeds and his bait and I thought it was very very good I mean I th- thought there were some things in there that I can definitely take into my fishing and the way he feeds it and lets the fish dictate to him how he wants to feed the rest of the match and yeah it, it was, from what I see the first part of it was, was really good because a lot of the videos you see you don't sort of get into an angler's mind Although Simon's advertising his mm. products and stuff like that, what he uses, it's it's more in depth. You know, it's interesting you say that because do you know what I mean? I we wanted to, I wanted to try and keep the videos to twenty minutes. Yeah. 
just, be, just because I like the pace. Yeah. So these um, last couple of videos have gone over and over and over. And this one, I, what did I do? I phoned her up last week and I said, Simon, um, this is this is an hour long mm. at the minute. Yeah. And we had this long conversation about what we yeah. wanted to do. And we both agreed that actually, do you know what? We're not going to make a video to get views. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a video that hopefully helps people. Mm -hmm. And because he, he, he knows so much. Oh, that's, that's what, that's, <laughs> to incredible. me, you say, oh, everyone wants, wants short videos and stuff like that. But if I'm into it, I'll watch it whether it's five minutes, 20 minutes or an hour long. Um, I mean, I'm only halfway through. I think he he was just explaining about how he feeds We his got worms. to 20 minutes before he's even started fishing on the video. Yeah. So if you think, in my head, we've done that 20 minute video. Yeah. And he, he hasn't even fished yet. No. But when I was going, what I did, I lined it all up and I did, I always do the intro first because that's the important bit, try and hook everybody in. And then I did the end. Mm -hmm. And then I started layering in mm -hmm. what we had planned throughout the session. And he's very good at planning things as well. Mm -hmm. And then I went through it and looked at it and thought, I don't know what to cut out. Because even though I'm an old, old match angler, yeah. I'm finding this really interesting. Yeah. So I, that's when I phoned him up and I went this conversation. I said, so what I did, I uploaded it to YouTube in its raw form. But only gave him the links, only he could see it. So he then watched it, mm -hmm. and then we had a conversation about, so what can we do now? And basically, I cut out one four-minute section, mm -hmm. and the rest of it, I've just tidied it up, just yeah, to lose yeah. a bit of time. And even now, I'm really pleased with it, even though it's so it's four, over 46 minutes long, but it's packed. Mm. All the way through, he's telling you exactly what mm. he's done. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And I just thought, wow. But the other thing was, it was so bloody windy. It doesn't come across on the video. No, it, it looked fairly windy. Oh, man. Um, the f everything was shaking. The cameras were shaking. Mm. And it was like... I thought that was just going, ooh, love you, Simon. <laughs> and I was throwing... I spent three hours in the van. I thought, solve this. And Ble no. <laughs> Let him talking to himself. No, for three hours, it was a, probably an hour <laughs> and a half in the middle. And do you know what? He, he was... He just he wanted to get everything. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to get it to replicate like the match, and it wasn't yeah. quite. Because no, that condition... was the other thing he said. Sort of, I fished the match the week before, and how it's changed differently, and that is exactly right. I mean, I was just thinking as you were talking. Then, these top anglers, you can say to someone, use that rig and do that and do that and do that, and then and then people go, yeah, but I didn't catch on that rig. Yes, but you can see in this video why the better anglers are so much better than everyone else. Yeah. Because, like I say, he, he can use that rig and he can do this, but the thinking behind it is the difference in the feeding. Well, like, the positive rig, the negative rig. Yeah. And he was he explained at the end. Yeah. I'll give it away. Yeah. What he did and what he was learning from yeah. what rigs it's, not working. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, is every day is, is a learning day when you're fishing, is it? Not yeah. two matches are exactly the same. Okay, sometimes they are, but you get sort of into the, his mind of thinking and how he's approaching it. And especially if you've not been to a new venue, if it's a new venue, you could approach it in that way as well because you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. You're sort of feeling your way in. Did and... you see when he was measuring out the yeah. bait? Yeah, yeah. And he knew, yeah. so he measured that 250 mil pot. Yeah. So he made 750 mils. And when he was baiting up, mm -hmm. he knew exactly yeah. how much was going on each line to that nth degree. And mm -hmm. he knew if it was even colder, he'd reduce... Yeah. Maggots. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, because and this is gonna be when I've been filming you and him, my lure fishing has got better. Right. Because I got stale. Right. And what I was doing, I was just going through the same motions. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna sound really big headed, but I am good at it and I catch really big fish and I know what I'm doing. But you, you get to a point whereby every day yeah. you've got to learn, haven't you? Yeah. But I I started to stay still. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is like this Xander fishing, I've been using methods I haven't used for a long time because I think they're a bit noddyish. Mm -hmm. But I've gone back and refining every yeah. week. If you look over there, there's a load of new baits, you see. So yeah. it's kind of like tapping into you and his mindset, it mm -hmm. refreshes you mm -hmm. because you're now surrounding yourself with people. Yeah. And so when he's talking about things that he was I'm thinking I'm now thinking straight away to what I'm doing. I'm relating that yeah. to how I was attacking different venues for these different species. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how you can transfer the skill set and the knowledge and go, right, yeah, incredible. Mm. But that was, yeah, if you haven't 
guys, it, it's out now, so watch it. It's really, really good. And the one that I did with you, I liked. I really liked that as well because you were doing the similar type things as well. You like the line. Yeah, I sort of the negative and the positive line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I see that, it was what I was doing. Yeah. But obviously, I, it was hard to explain it while you're fishing in a match because you want to win, especially when you're fishing against your mates who will absolutely rinse you if you didn't beat them. So I was sort of trying to concentrate. Plus. When you're in a match, you, you, you don't want old mate next to you <laughs> listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> but like you said, if even people hear it, yeah. can they do it? No, no, you're right. Yeah. But so, yeah, it was, yeah, it was awkward because you're sort of trying to be quiet as well because you don't want to spook the fish. <laughs> and you sort of, yeah, it is, it is different. But that type of fishing is very current in at the minute. That silverfish commercial fishing. There's lots of two day festivals. A lot of the anglers that would normally fish for carp and F ones, just too cold. They're not. They just shoal up. And anglers do switch to this that style of fishing. So it is really relevant. And yeah. the way he's sort of put it all together is brilliant. It was so. It's like okay, we'll just chuck it. And what's interesting? I've been looking at the stats this morning because I was really worried about the length of the video. Mm. And the average. We've had a thousand views, well, well over a thousand views in, a few, in a few, just mm -hmm. a few hours. Yeah. And sorry, boring body, but this is quite important. The average view of each person is over 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, on most, regardless of whether it's fishing or cooking, if you can get nine minutes, that's amazing. It's normally about a minute, two minutes. Right. And this is like, so people are watching at least 16 minutes. Yeah. Now, I know they know it's that, and they're probably watching it in sections, mm. but that means that he is appealing to people. Just yeah. from his knowledge base and what you said when you started watching Not being it. funny, there's nothing on TV. Everyone was watching YouTube, didn't they? YouTube's the place to go to watch anything. Yeah. There are so many... I'm, I'm not putting myself in this category. The reason I love it is I watch some of these guys and they are amazing at producing content. So all these videographers like right. Peter McKinnon or people like that. And that you kind of go... And it inspires you to do better things. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's why I like videoing you guys because it makes me think about, well, what can I do? That's why I get the drone out to annoy you and just get different angles and things. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it brings the sport alive a bit more. Yeah. Even at our level, my level, or what of my level of videography, but you, you make each video a bit better. And the next one's next, the next one's better, mm. the next one's better. And it, it isn't, I sit there and I learn so much from listening. It's really interesting. So I think if people can, people will look at things in different ways. But hopefully most match anglers will look at these things and go... Yeah, but th they do because it's another way of gleaning information and learning, isn't it? You know, it, if I think about, oh, I'm going to book into a two-day festival on there, I go online and there's millions of videos at this fishery, it might be just some bloke just tapping some pellets in or some pleasure angler, but you look at it because it says that fishery, so you click on it and you look and you get... You're not really taking much notice of the chap catching a fish on the surface or whatever he's doing... But you're looking at the shape of the lakes, the layout, the... Do you know what I mean? You can. It's such good information, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to this that I was talking about earlier, the, the weight loss thing that I've mm. been on. And also Polly mm -hmm. and Will's more. So if you want to get coaching with Simon, get in contact with him. But Mark Pollard's a brilliant coach, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. And I think society's now got to this point whereby people who want to learn, it's really accessible because you've got coaches. So this is yeah. coaches at this um, weight loss thing. I'm using them, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, Polly is a coach Will's Moore's a coach I'm going to start doing some predator coaching I've already got one or two people interested which is really good so thank you for that you were thinking about it at one point mm. be very busy yeah but this is I think society's got to a point where particularly no matter what aspect of sport you're looking at there now is access available to learn at your own level at your own pace because YouTube helps all these videos help but you can buy in knowledge so a day sitting with Polly or Simon would be amazing, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You'd learn so much. It is, yeah. yeah. And anglers who know what they're doing can impart mm -hmm. so much knowledge that the person who's buying it gets saturated and will probably only take on 5%. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Do you need to go? No, I'm all right in a minute. Cool, cool, cool. Right. I said I wanted to keep it short and I've waffled on for... That's what we do, isn't it? Half an hour. Should yeah. we do some? Well, let's go back a couple of weeks and see where we are with mar uh, match results. So, yeah. So, obviously, with the weather, there's been quite a lot of cancellations. Um, the main sort of obviously this week there was the March, uh, excuse me, the Bennick mm. Open match, which there was like sixty odd booked in. 
Um, was it frozen? Yeah, frozen <sighs> solid. Yeah, every peg was frozen. Um, so Bob Nudd drew a bunghole. Yeah, he did with an empty peg to his right. Every, he, everyone's everyone's saying the bloke did he that drive? Did he drive to the peg or did he walk to it? No, he did drive. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what peg was it? Five or four? No, peg three. <laughs> yeah. When you serve Bob, you do what you want. Unless your name's Stan or Sir Bob, you do what you want down there. <laughs> um, so uh, it was going to be tough. And the good thing, reading, sort of looking at the Winter League final, the 20 foot's not been fishing very well, not no. enough pegs. So it was sort of the way Bennick's fished this week, all 64 pegs in the line, to me, says you don't need to look no further. We've got 64 Who's going to make a decision about that? Uh, the Angling Trust will make a decision. But no, mate, as, but they won't know what they're doing. <laughs> Who's well, going to make a decision on whether... I don't know. I suppose it's for the local anglers, yeah. obviously me, whoever. Are you, do, you, do you have a big say in it? Um, I help out if I can, but I don't want to be too involved with it, if you know what you I mean. Know, okay, but you being who you are, you won't say this, but I'd imagine what you they will take your advice to be one of the biggest highlights because you'll know what's going on. Yeah. And yeah. you know what you're talking about. Well. You do. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's not yeah. beat with a bush here. That's what I'm, I'm not being rude about the Angling Trust, but they're not local. They won't know what's going no, on. No, no. Whereas you no. will. But for me, it looks, I think it'll be easier for people travelling down as well. We haven't yeah. got the 20 foot that's top four, top five rigs and crashing a load of bait in. It's, but also that 20 foot, know. even when it's on fire, it's still very peggy, isn't it? If you're not uh, next to the bridge, you're not It's winter. Yeah. It's winter. It doesn't matter what venue, anywhere you go, the best silver fish venues, the best commercial carp venues, they're going to be Peggy. Yeah. And the draw plays a massive part in it, you know, and that's that's just what how it is. It's a winter league at the end of the day. Um, but in general, as the 64 pegs in the line, it fished fantastic, really. I mean, that cold weather? a lot of people dislike Benick, um, small fish and bits and bobs. But as a match venue, 60 pegs in the line, it's a proper little match venue. And you can I mean? park... At the top of the match, if your name's Bob, no, he could drive. Oh, you can park. All, all you guys can park in that farmer's car park. Yeah, yeah. I mean, access is easy. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to all the venues, but as a venue goes, mm. it's you know, there's areas where we're going to be better than others. But it's a proper little. Well, match I think. Length. I think there aren't many negatives for that, mate. No, no. So, um, the match winner was Pete Duffy. I think he's from Halifax, Huddersfield, up there anywhere, and. Uh, Oh, so he, actually, he's not cold for him. No, no, he's it's just normal. Was he in shorts and yeah, t-shirts? Shorts, yeah, 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 lad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thump. Uh, <laughs> and um, he had ten pound. I, I did my teacher training in Leeds, right? Yeah. And I turned up at the school with my tracksuit bottoms on. Yeah. And it was bloody freezing. Yeah. And this was September. Yeah. And the head of PE went, "Yeah, Andy, lad, no, no, we we wear our." Sh-. I said, "You might wear your shorts." I said, "I'm freezing." Yeah. <laughs> They're hard up there. <laughs> I got no sense, no feeling, mate. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, they're good, good lads up there. Yeah. Um, so Pete Duffy won it with ten pound four. Runner up was Sir Bob with eight pound five. They had an empty peg between them. Uh, third spot was Alfie Nichols, and he did really well. Really, he's a young lad. I don't think he's probably fished Bennett before. Um, I know he's fished for the England youths so at under sixteens, I think they are, or under fifteens, whatever they are. And he had seven pound fifteen from an area which. Past Little London on the bend. It's not particularly brilliant area, so he did exceptionally well with 7.15. And then your man, Neil Stacey Adcock, um, £7.11. He was next to Nuddy on peg four. I hope Neil's mm. buying lottery tickets. He should do. He's he? on fire, isn't he? He yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, he's doing well. Yeah. Um, and then there was quite a lot of £7, lots of sixes, fives. It's pretty, pretty steady all the way through, and considering the conditions was a very good match you know there's a lot of areas where you probably could have thought I could have framed today do you know what I mean which mate if that had been frozen solid you could probably double all those weights yeah I mean in comparison we go on to March now there's a hundred odd pegs at March the fishing is phenomenal the fish are bigger everything there's more there's skimmers there's all different ways of catching a weight of fish and different species of fish but it's more peggier than Benick yeah you know what I mean um the weights are phenomenal. I mean, Josh Newman won the match the week before. This is the March Open. Yeah, yeah. thirty-eight pound from peg three. I think he was on. No, peg four. Um, what starting down the course? Yeah. Yeah. So as far that end as you can. So I went 
You know, when you, you had the previous match where you, uh, Danny Mason won it. Yeah. You were telling me where you were yeah, played, yeah. and I actually went trying to catch some Xander at night. Yeah, yeah. With me and Tom Moyer went. Yeah. Listen, I'm not. I was hit. I could feel the fish. Yeah. I was using a little drop shot rod, and I was in certain pegs. Mm. I was actually hitting the fish with my yeah. line. Yeah. It is absolutely rigid in some of those oh, pegs. Oh, it is. It is. You get to some pegs, and you you got nothing. And suddenly, you get, you, so you go, hold on a minute. You go, but I was going back going, they're fish. Mm. Cast into certain spots, and they're boats and things. Yeah. As I'm pulling the rig Features. back, you just you can feel it do, 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 as a fish are hitting the line mm. or the lead. Mm. There's a lot a, of fish And that there. shows you how solid it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't catch a sand that night. No, never no. mind. You will do. Um, so we had £38. And then in comparison, right up the other end, so up towards the bypass bridge, MPEG, which... Um, isn't a particularly it's quite a wide peg um, how close to the bridge it's about four below the bridge it's a noted crap peg really um so you've got that big boat opposite no they've built a new like little outlet thing from the new housing estate it's right on the bend it's years ago there'd be like two different spots to sit down it's real sandy and the bank's really high behind you you'll know exactly where it is like there used to be a boat there and then about Two pegs down, there's an old hut, like concrete hut, on the far bank that's sort of half broken down now. But yeah, anyway, it's not a particularly very good peg. Is that peg. warm water coming in? No, no. I think it's just because it's an M peg. Oh, um, right. So it's not trickling in or anything? No. So, I'm sure Cheesy said that was the only peg that wasn't frozen over. The, the match before, yeah. whatever. Yeah, maybe. Um, but Graham Welton drew it. G-Wag. He had 37. He's powerful. another one, isn't he? Does he buy lottery tickets? Well, it's not it's not me. I, you know, I just... They do draw bungholes, don't they? But they've got to catch them. <laughs> they they've got to catch, catch them. them. They it's the same old names drawing at March. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, but and, Graham doesn't watch the podcast anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's from Leeds. He'd be in his short T-shirt yeah, as well. Yeah. Mind you, he's in the RAF. They're not yeah. so hard, are no, they? No, no, isn't no. 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 Chocks away. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, he uh, was in the RAF. Yeah. He retired at 30. G&T. <laughs> So, yeah. Back to Blighty Boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Graham Welton was second with £37.04. Then, Ben Stamford, another angler, never fished a venue before. He had £33.03 behind the swimming pool, like the big long peg. How can, how can they get those weights out and they've never fished it before? Um, because they're very good anglers. Just transferring you, skills. You've got to imagine these anglers are the best anglers from all over the country yeah. coming in to fish. Um, runner uh, fourth was Ibo. Uh, he had 32.14 again he was behind the swimming pool um, and then James Draculic 32 pound 5 um, he drew just below Hemp Boat as we know it just between that and the so between Wiggy's Bridge and the first disabled platform there he had 32.5 and then um, Glassback Winters got dodgy hand uh, 32 pound 2 off an absolute bunghole next to the bridge so yeah, I think he uh, said he'd got £14. Did you fish it? Yeah, I drew the other end. Yeah, I drew the epicentre of shit. <laughs> As normal. I think there was, there was Alistair Ogle So you must me. be pegged next to Tom Moretti then? No, no. No, Tom didn't fish that match. No, Tom, no. It's He's too, where he'd normally too, be. Too busy getting engaged, wasn't he? That's right, it's Pete Emery or something like that. Yeah, congratulations, Thomas. Um... So we drew just above the scout hut, between the scout hut and the turning bay at the bypass. And the week before, we had the hayjack on there, and it, the weights really dropped through that bit. And I don't know why. I, I like. I normally like it through there. There's normally a few fish, but I mean, I had thirteen, thirteen pound fourteen. I think God has had like twelve pound, nearly thirteen pound. Ali had. It was really close. Do you know what I mean? It was. It was. The wind was hacking through there. Anyway, I'm not making excuses. It weren't as good as the rest of it. Caught a few fish. The M peg in my section towards the town. Um, Charlie Gooch had £20 on the M. And then I was the next best way out of everyone else. But that's just, just how it goes, mate. It's yeah. fishing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all in all, it fished very well again. Um, there's going to be... Obviously, now, from now on, it's sort of proper going to get some hammer. Maybe this ice might do it some good. So, what we now, we are on the... So, it's, 20, it's be 25th tomorrow when this comes out. Yeah. So, so, how many more matches are lined up so on there? So, we've got this Sunday's our second round of the Hayjack, which is on March and Bennick. Yeah. 
Then the following weekend, which will be the 5th, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the March Open, and I think there's a match on at Benick the same day for people that can't right, get okay. in March. Yeah. And then the week after that will be the 12th, Sunday so, the 12th. Yeah. So there's a hayjack round then. And then the week after that, the 19th and 18th, I think Saturday, Stan Jays are running an open on Benick, and Sunday is the the Winter League teams practice where every team gets five anglers on March. And that's the last weekend you can practice. And is there final the week after? The following Saturday. Yeah. Are these fish still looking like they're new pennies? Uh, I think in, in the epicenter bit, and <laughs> every fish never been caught. It's like, but in the harder area, especially where I was, the fish were getting more pressured, the yeah. fish were smaller. Uh, it just felt like... They it shine was, off. It's, yeah. it's, you know, they're, they're sort of reacting differently to yeah. bait. And yeah. yeah, it just... Um, yeah, that's what they're like doing. The, it. the tougher areas are starting to go down here already. But you can't moan at £13 of fish do you know what I mean you still can't mate. I wonder I, there's some of those when I did that whip video with Simon some of those fish coming out I couldn't believe the condition they were in oh a mint isn't they oh it's like what where have they where have they been yeah, all like, of their lives they, yeah they've been out somewhere in the fen down the 20 uh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of these fish are 20 foot fish I think they're just the middle level system yeah. in general to be honest and um, I, I haven't got time to talk about it now no. but when they took out those gates at um, the aqueduct the fishing downstream improved dramatically. Predator fishing, yeah, and the silver fishing, but we didn't realise because it took us five or six years to actually catch up. Yeah, and it allowed the middle level system fish to, to actually migrate come up this way. Yeah. yeah, and I think they've migrated more and more and more and more. Yeah. I think the dream of them the same. Yeah. There's been a lot of netting that the you know the foreigners have nicked a load of fish, particularly the predators. There's been a load of bream taken in the gill nets, but I think that's allowed. And the people don't like what I just said, tough titty, but that's the truth. Um, and I think that's allowed the biomass of fish, silvers wise, to grow even more because there's less bigger fish in the mm -hmm. system. And I think it's just got better and better yeah. and better. And It'd be interesting if the Environment Agency could tag a few of these roach and actually find out where they go. Yeah, they're not interested, mate. Aren't they? But surely if they could. <laughs> if they've they got no interest in that at all. Tag be, the um, fish, they could then improve the habitat where they're going or they're gonna, they're for future money. generations. I don't know. Got no money. Yeah, yeah right. All right, anyway, yeah. moving on. Don't want to talk about them. No, they moving on. They me beyond the nth degree. Um, so but it would be interesting. Yeah. It would be fascinating. Yeah. And I've often thought about the bream. I'd love to tag... no one knows. Everyone goes, oh, where do they come from? We go, hmm. The bream. Where... I, I've mentioned this a few times. I, have, I found an area in 2016-17 which was... People would think I was lying how many bream were stacked up in one area in mm. the middle of nowhere on a fen drain that's all linked to the middle level. Mm. And they were there two years running, the third year they weren't there. Um, the numbers of these bream were... I used, I used to dead bait, put my gear where I thought they were moving through, and at certain times of the day, my dead bait throats would go... Ooh, ooh, as the bream were going past and actually swimming through. There was that many of them. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they, I think they would go down with the flow as the the drain stopped running off they'd swim back upstream and the next morning you'd find them in exactly the same place it was incredible and that it was a huge number it was at one point it was 500 yards long but that's when they had spread out a bit in the day mm -hmm. when they got real tight they were in a little 100 yard yeah. stretch but it was black with them and mm. you just think this is probably all the bream to miles well, around you need one little thing to go wrong uh, an oxygen crash or a gillnet mate a gillnet, exactly. anything like that. These fish move a long way. How many years worth? Yeah, of a gillnets catch them all. Gone. Yeah, the number of gillnets we found with dead and uh, dying bream in them because they'd just been hung up in there for months. And the first gillnet I ever found was very close to this area and uh, just dead bream in it, and it was a really badly set net. Mm. But that's sadly, I think that's what's been happening. But mm. it would be so interesting to find out. It really would. But hey, hey, what do we know? What do we're we only know? the local anglers who've been doing it for an awful long time and we do we do glean a little bit of experience and knowledge mm -hmm. but it would be fascinating because like I said the, the, the rud as well where do all the rud go in the winter because rud out there rud and rain disappear and the roach appear the rud in this river yeah I go on my boat in the winter summer I didn't do it this summer I meant to I did it last summer with a little waggler rod I take a size 8 hook match rod scale down like 
I take just two or three loaves of bread and I'm pinging the, I don't even see the bread, I'm pinging through lily pads and suddenly it is like, mm. and the first one you catch is always the biggest one and I've had loads of twos, can't mm. get a three pounder and then you get a pound and a half fish, pound fish and you, there are, honestly, I'd take a massive pike landing net and I'd put them in there just to let them recover so I don't scoop the rest of the shoal and I look at these fish and go, bloody hell. Mm. Lovely, isn't it? They are like someone's just painted them. Like cruising, isn't they? Yeah, but where do they go? They must all stack in somewhere. Very rich environment we've got. Mm. Just, uh, it's changed, that's the thing. Anyway, where were, what, where were we? We were match results. Yeah. Um, so uh, this weekend, or this week's Ramsey matches, again, they were at St Mary's. On my travels on Sunday, I drove along there and I could see them all sat there like this, and I thought... Catching little, yeah, little ones, papers. little pinky fish, yeah. Um, so this Sunday's match was won by Paul Kilby, five pound eight. Runner up was Richard Scratcher, uh, four pound nine, and then Duncan Folks, three pound eleven. And then Wednesday, uh, Kev Malt, five ten, Ivan Benjamin Button Steals, five five, Duncan Folks, four twelve, and then Dave Steals, four pound ten and a half. So the weights have massively dropped off there. Um, I think they're back there again this week. Probably today as the podcast comes out and Sunday. They'll be Some of those there. anglers probably haven't moved. They just move along. No, they just stayed there. Yeah. They get, get takeaway. Oh, Colgate, Keith. <laughs> yeah. They've just taken up residence down at Ramsey St Mary's. Mm. Oh, my yeah. Lord. And then um, Johnny Wilson, not this week, week before, the mm. Islam had a match on the backwater. I think it was the... 1st of Jan I think or something like that 11th of Jan 15th of Jan maybe um, so the river was sort of obviously belting through and top weight was Gavin Sadler with £11.6 six, which was 52 fish so nice stamp fish uh, Pete Bowes oh, £5.7 yeah. and then Nathan Brown £5 so it's all roach and little chublets which obviously chub we don't get a lot of but the lark's got quite a lot of nice sort of Little uh, soldiers in there. Yeah, um, that'd be good. That, I bet that's great fishing. Yeah, a nice different yeah. day. Yeah. A bit of stick float, maybe, a bit of that sort of thing. And then um, we have mentioned the St. Neat's Angling Club before. Um, there's a little brook, and it's more like a ditch that runs right through uh, St. Neat's. And obviously, if you've been to St. Neat's, the river's lovely around there, and it? the yeah. it's here, yeah. there, and everywhere. And this little brook runs right through, it's probably about that deep. And when the river's in flood, like this time of year, all the fish migrate in there. Or they probably just get in there because they want to get out of the flow. And they run a series, and Gary Armage has been running a series for two or three years now with Stu Cutler as well. Um, and it's over three matches, and it's great friendly banter. You know, it's a proper angling club. They've got youngsters, they've got females fishing. It's, you know, old boys. It is a proper angling club, and, you know... It was good. I went and had a look on Sunday and it was good people walking about and hey, getting on and felt like... So you fishing. drove out there as well? Yeah, I had a drive out there as <laughs> yeah. well. And um, <laughs> so it just felt... I don't know, it just felt good. It felt like... I don't know, it was just... It just felt like what fishing was years ago and what fishing's all about. Yeah, you know? yeah. Encouraging people to... Not about the money, about enjoying themselves and getting out and fishing so it was it was it was great and the series was won by um ian rolf which um i don't know ian personally but he had four points with and 39 pound seven over the three matches runner-up was dicko mark dickinson uh 35 pound one and four points so obviously ian rolf won on weight and then Stu cutler had five points, forty-two pound five, and then Gary Armiger thirty-six pound nine. Mm. So that's the the results for the series. Um, actually, Sunday's match when I walked through, it was rock hard. That was it was fishing rock hard, and some bits they call it the forest. And I walked up there, and I, I was like, oh, oh. and they sort of moaned about factory bank. Do you know what I mean? You could literally see everything on the bottom, and all of a sudden, what you thought was the bottom would move. And these little shoals of roach were just like moving. And then all of a sudden where they were, you could see the bottom and could see a traffic cone. And then all of a sudden where you could see traffic cones over there, you couldn't see because all these fish were like moving. It looked like the silt was moving. Amazing to watch what the fish were reacting and reacting to the way angler, what anglers were doing. It was quite good really. 
and some of it it was just too clear too shallow the river had obviously yeah took a lot of water out so the water level dropped the color went with it and a lot of them struggled but gary armager when i left he'd got one tiny little fish like that and I, the results from this week gary won it with 17 pound 12 wow Mike Milton, £9.4, and then Kevin Cooper, £8.3. So the weights were obviously a lot lower than what they have been. But considering Gary had not had caught one tiny little fish after probably an hour and a half to weigh £17. So they've just... It's weird how something just triggers them to feed him. Yeah. Um, you Light could see levels. This, yeah, I think it? what happened, there was... there were uh, Where um, there's a... I think they call it Box Brook joins the Hen Brook, which is above this little bridge... And this box brook was, there was colour going below. And the fir- all the pegs that did well were the first three or four pegs mm. nearest where this colour was coming in. And then everyone below it really struggled. Um, and then uh, it just, it was just amazing. And how just something, a little bit of colour like that can trigger the roach into feeding. A bit of confidence. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, a great little series. And I'm sure they'll run it again next year. Incredible um, weights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of the swan that passed from Yeah, very similar. A bit more featured than the swan. A bit more trees. and Has that, ever pro- has that produced recently? They don't dress it out anymore, do they? I think if you went down there, you'd probably catch. But the swan was always where the fish from Clough migrated to yeah. when it got really cold. Yeah. And obviously, there's no fish at Clough, so I doubt there'd be any fish there. Yeah. But you never know. They could All these fish could be hiding down there because that drain goes for miles and miles, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I remember. they go through Throck and Holt and they yeah. branches off. I've uh, never... T- set yeah. of sluice gates, come on, what they're called now. Um, uh, it's left me, but uh, yeah, amazing. These little drains are amazing, really. How yeah. they hold fish, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, are you are you done? I'm done with my results. That's all. I, oh, sorry, no. Um, Saturday on Benick, uh, Whittlesey, Mark Barron won it with 5.13. That's break mm. the ice. Steve Windmill Smith, and as, as he's now known, uh, 4.13, and then Andy Lawrence, £3.14. So, um, yeah. That's all I could muster from the last two weeks. Really. No, that's good. I mean, Mark's doing a great job with the Whittlesea series, isn't yeah. they? Still, they still keep going, which is mm-hmm. really good. And so do the, it's like the Ramsey Club. They're still churning it out. Yeah. I've got um, a match result, uh, result, a match result from Derek from the 11th of Jan. This mm-hmm. was the Wednesday match at the River Steeping. So this would be the Spilsby guys. So first on peg 22 was Dave Dean with £8.14. Second was Dave Ashmore with 7 2 Third was Ian Brody with five six, and fourth was Dave Andrew with four pound. Fifth was Mick Stamp with ten ounces. So, and six was Ben Rowbottom with four ounces. Ah. Yeah, so it was big fish or Tough. bust. Yeah, river was high in coloured and running hard. Dave Dean had two bream and a tench. Dave Ashmore mm. had three bream and a skimmer. Ian had two bream, and Dave Andrew had one bream. So. Um, the, the small fish were not being caught, mm. so that was that little section of those match results changes mm. all the time, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Just keeps throwing up different types mm. of fishing, which is interesting. Right, mate. So going back to this weekend, you've got Hey Jack. Yeah, I've got Monk Jack League again. Monk Jack, yeah. Um, yeah. Which team are you in? I'm fishing for the March team again. The March team. Yeah. So have you given your dad orders and the boys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. And uh, that's at Benick and March, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. It should be the same pegs, I would think, as the first round. So Cool. Um, we shall see. Yeah. Well, let's hope. I, don't, I haven't looked at the long term weather forecast. I don't know what's going to happen uh, in a few days. I, I think it's meant to warm up from Thursday onwards, really. So the hopefully. water must be really cold. Yeah. Because I'm not expecting it to be exceptionally. No. Brilliant this week. I don't get cold, mm-hmm. and I've been cold recently. Mm-hmm. And even today, when I was out this morning, going to my little fat loss thing, mm-hmm. um, I got really cold. Mm. Like it was, it was, it was. You know, it hurts your lungs when it's cold. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking, car, oh. and that only happens when I go snowboarding. When I used to go snowboarding, it'd be yeah. that cold. I'm thinking this, this air temperature. Like when you went with the private school snowboarding, or when you was called Tarquin, I think. No, 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 no. 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 Um, yeah, and that was when uh, chest, you know, you know, the, the air temperature is really cold when it starts to hurt. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that water temperature is going to be like two degrees, and it's not going to be much above that. And those fish are going to be well, 
<laughs> they don't move, do they? So no. they don't need to eat. No. As simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You think how many fish are in your peg and you don't catch them. However, if we get a mild spell... They feed like mad. Yeah, yeah. they go mad. Yeah, it'd be good. Right, guys, yeah. don't forget to send your comments in of, what, how you, of ideas how you think we could um, hmm, improve. Refresh. Refre- refresh is the best word. Yes. Yeah, refresh it all. Don't forget to watch the Wheelsmore video. Don't forget to watch Alex struggling at Rookery on Rook mm-hmm. Lake. Mm-hmm. He really enjoyed doing that. Mm-hmm. I did. I enjoyed the fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do it again, but not in a match. Well, that so the plan I mean. was that I was going to video you yeah. fishing for silvers. So Alex, actually, we'd arranged to do the filming the week. No, a couple of days later, it changed to a five. No, no. I think half an hour, not even that, five <laughs> minutes later, it changed to being a, a match, wasn't it? With five of you? Yeah. Well, no, what it was is I was on the phone and we said, yeah, we'll do it on Monday. Yep, yeah, no problem. And then literally they come off the phone, Rob Humphreys, Caster Blaster, Pricey, can we have a match on Monday? So it was like, uh, I can't say no because I'm filming. Do you know what I mean? But I th- there was five of you. Because we were going to have breakfast. And yeah, they, they were, yeah. I was wondering and what they were going to buy me breakfast. By the time we'd finished the match and weighed in and done whatever that was on that Saturday... It gone to 17. It'd, it'd gone to 17. Yeah. And crazy. I was like, oh, no. You're all like drug addicts. You just don't get enough of it. It's, no, like, it's just different, isn't it? Yeah. Like I say, that sort of fishing's the, the in thing. At the Nigel. Thoughts? Yeah. Never met him before. He loved it. Yeah. Yeah. He said he had a... Love, he said he really, really enjoyed... Well, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's what that was the key to it, was that people liked it because mm. it was completely different. Mm-hmm. And I think the fact that it was nice not to be doing the same thing as yeah, 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 yeah. So make sure you watch that video as well. Give us feedback on everything, and um, get out and go fishing when the the thaw comes. Because mm-hmm. at the minute, I don't blame you for sitting at home and watching loads of Newcastle. Oh uh, yeah, people aren't that desperate. <laughs> Right, mate, anything else that you need to add? No. No. All good. Your phone's been going mental for the last half an hour. Right, we're going to wrap that up and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.